Good evening, and welcome to Money Matters. My name is Kim Hatsa, and I'm a business attorney at Growth Council in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I focus my practice in the areas of technology, life sciences, and healthcare. Tonight, we're continuing our special series on technology and life sciences leaders in the Delaware Valley. Before we get started, I want to remind our viewers that from time to time, financial issues relating to technology or life sciences matters or companies will be discussed on the show. These discussions are not and should not be viewed as financial advice. Moreover, since the show is pre-recorded and shown at a later time, the information may no longer be current. You should always speak with your financial advisor before entering into any financial transaction. I'm happy to have with me as my co-host this evening, Charlie Huntington. Charlie is the head of public relations at Life Sciences PA. Life Sciences PA is the voice of advancement for the life sciences in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Charlie, thanks for co-hosting. Thanks, Kim, and it's a pleasure to be on the show with you. I've got a question for you. You have been busy this fall, and I wonder if you would bring our viewers up to speed with what's been keeping you busy. Uh, sure. It's actually been at this point for about nine months, but uh, which is a good thing considering under the circumstances that most of us working remotely most of the time, it's, uh, it's, it's been a bit surprising actually. But we've had a number of transactions in the uh, technology and life sciences space throughout the year. We had early part of the year, I had a, a, an M&A transaction. We, we sold a healthcare IT company. I just finished a uh, Series C round of financing for a medical device company, and I am trying to close by the end of the year another sale of a healthcare IT company. And then there's yet another health IT company that's looking to sell, and that sale will probably not happen until the end of the uh, first quarter of next year. So it's it's been busy. It's been a pleasant surprise, and uh, we're looking for for it to continue uh, beyond this period. Good for you and congratulations to your firm. Thank you. Appreciate that. Well, we have a, a terrific guest tonight and I want to bring him out as soon as possible. But before I do, I just want to uh, remind our viewers that if you have a question that you would like us to answer on a future show, watch this video to see how you do it. You can have your questions answered on Money Matters. Please go to our website, money-matterstv.com. On our homepage, click on the banner on the right that says, Send Us Your Questions. While you're on our website, you can find information about our host and guests, as well as show notes and links about this show and past shows. Money Matters is also available as a podcast on iTunes and Stitcher, so you can listen to Money Matters while you're on the go. That website address, again, is money, M-O-N-E-Y, dash matters, M-A-T-T-E-R-S-T-V dot com. It's my great pleasure to introduce our special guest this evening, Kevin Brown. Uh, Mr. Brown is the co-founder, president, and CEO of Ascensio LLC, a technology company dedicated to helping organizations find and monetize value in intellectual property. He began his career at Purdue Pharma, where he held several positions over a 13-year period, including being a medicinal chemist from 2001 to 2006 and a process chemist from 2006 to 2008 before transitioning his focus to contracts, patent prosecution support, and research and development competitive intelligence from 2008 to 2014. Before leaving Purdue Pharma and prior to co-founding Ascensio, Kevin helped Purdue create Savant IP, a startup company focused on helping biopharmaceutical industry clients manage their intellectual assets for continuous identification and evaluation of potential licensing partners, where he served as the vice president and general manager. Kevin holds a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry from Westchester University, a law degree from Widener University, and an MBA from St. Joseph's University. Kevin, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, Kevin, what first attracted you to a career in the life sciences? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, two parts. Really, my parents in the beginning, uh, I, was, I was always in a uh, 
scholars sort of program or, or something like that in the summer uh, built around the scientists. But it wasn't until my uh, undergrad career um, when I first was introduced to organic chemistry and uh, my first professor there uh, that I started to develop a love uh, for uh, the medicinal chemistry and the sciences and, and things like that. Um, and, you know, one thing led to another and eventually I wound up uh, in the life sciences, but uh, that that really was uh, the crux of it. Was was my uh, undergrad career and and that first professor I had that uh, showed me a, a love of organic chemistry. So all right, so you were you were inspired. Yeah. Um, how how would you say your experience at Purdue Pharma and then subsequently at uh, Savant IP helped prepare you to be an entrepreneur and the CEO of Asensio? Now, that was a, an, an entrepreneurial experience. So you know, when we started Savant IP, a, a lot of that activity was born around some technologies that my partner and I at Asensio now, we developed inside when we were in Purdue. And uh, those technologies weren't necessarily being used as much by the company as we would have liked, but uh, fortuitous circumstances, we were as a group being let go and uh, what we wound up having to do was to sell ourselves and our ideas around this burgeoning technology inside of Purdue um, and then get Purdue and their board to believe in it, which we were able to do. And they set us up as a separate company, uh, Savant IP. Uh, and even though my official title was general manager and vice president of Savant IP, I was essentially operating as the CEO of the company, selling our products to uh, internally to Purdue uh, users, uh, selling uh, the idea of what we could do to produce boards, um, and also uh, my partner and I selling the idea of what we were doing to some of the employees that we brought back in to Savant IP to help us uh, run the company. So being the CEO uh, of Savant IP essentially helped me to um, do what I'm doing now. Yeah, it sounds like it was almost a, an exact, you know, or near exact uh, trial run for, for what you were ultimately doing when you set up Asensio. Yeah. Um, what would you say is the most challenging aspect of your role as CEO of Asensio? I, I would say the constant selling. Right? So you have to, as a CEO, you, you're constantly selling yourself. You're constantly selling your ideas. Uh, you're constantly selling your products and the company, um, but you're doing it externally and internally. Right? So I'm constantly selling my ideas, even to the people that work with me and work for me. Um, you, you can't just sort of uh, direct and, and expect everyone to understand and believe in and want to do uh, the things that you'd like them to do, even though you understand it and you think everyone else should understand exactly what you're talking about. Uh, it's the constant selling that for me, has been the most challenging aspect. Uh, yeah, I guess, I mean, if you're, if you're really trained as a scientist uh, and also, well, as a business person too, because of your, both your MBA and I would say your law degree, but still you're, you're, you're uh, at your heart, you were a scientist at first, so have to transition to be selling all the time. Uh, I can, I can absolutely understand that that would be challenging. Sure. Um, are, would you say there are uh, one or more aspects of your job that came as a complete surprise to you? Um, I, I, I wouldn't say it was necessarily a surprise, but I, I think uh, one of the things uh, that my partner and I, we took for granted uh, was uh, access to capital. Um, you know, we were at Savant IP, what was essentially a startup company, but we didn't own it. Uh, so we could very easily go to our Purdue's board and, and ask them for $5 million and they could give it to us. Um, so, you know, when we left, we thought it would be, you know, just as easy, even though I wasn't completely naive. So I knew that um, raising raising money was, was, was difficult. I just didn't understand how difficult it, it really, really was. Charlie? Hi, Kevin. Hi. Can you tell us about Asensio, please? Yeah, Asensio uh, at its core is a company that helps organizations use intellectual property to its fullest potential. And, and our focus area is the biopharmaceutical industry, 
Um, but at our core, that's what we do, help organizations really uh, generate the most strategic value and monetizable value uh, from their IP or from the intellectual property of others. So why, why did you guys get into this business? Well, uh, we saw at Purdue and at other companies uh, that organizations, even though IP, everyone knows it's valuable. They, they say it's valuable. You know, it's, it's worth a lot. We spend a lot of money on it. Um, but one of the things that we found out very quickly uh, in, in some of the statistical research that we've done and that we did in the past when we started the company was that greater than 95% of all biopharmaceutical industry patents and applications uh, never produce value uh, in the form of marketable products or other related revenue for companies. Uh, we saw that as being an, ex an extreme amount of waste that the industry is comfortable with because it generates so much revenue. Uh, but we felt we could help and, and at our core, that's what we try to do. So when, when you look at the company's areas of focus, um, will you cover those in more detail for us? Yeah, so in, in terms of our focus areas, uh, we really sell to, uh, of course, IP attorneys. Uh, we sell to uh, researchers and medicinal chemists specifically and uh, licensing and business development professional. So each one of those groups, uh, they have a use for IP, each one differently, uh, but still it's, it's still the general understanding of, of how each can use IP to, its fullest, to their fullest potential or to its fullest potential to drive uh, answers to their strategic business question. All right, and do you have proprietary IP at this point? Oh, yes. Yes, we do. Uh, it, it, some of it came during our, our time at Purdue and we were able to uh, to uh, get access to that as well. And we've also developed our own IP since we've launched the company in, in 2017. Right now we have uh, two issued patents and, and nine pending applications with uh, many more coming. That's great. So at what stage of development is the company's technology? So we, we've officially productized actually this month. Uh, we started out as a technology enabled consulting company. Um, so, so this conversation with you uh, now is, is literally right on time because we just launched our first product. It's called IP Geoscape. It's a molecular landscaping tool with an IP focus. Um, we literally started selling the product this month. So I, I'm happy to say we are a product company. Congratulations. Thank you. Is there anything about your proprietary IP and its application to companies in the biopharmaceutical industry that would require FDA approval, Kevin? No, nothing, nothing that, that we have or that we do would require FDA approval, uh, but we work on projects uh, for customers uh, that are seeking FDA approval. So we're supporting it, but there's nothing inherent to, to our, our tech or our product that will require FDA approval. Okay, and where, where would you see uses for your technology that might not meet the eye to the, the person who's just beginning to look at this? Um, so the, the tech, even though it has an IP focus, uh, we really, from a molecular landscaping standpoint, uh, can cross the barriers of industry. So. Uh, our, our focus, of course, is the biopharmaceutical industry and, and helping organizations and customers maximize the value of their IP or the value of, of third party IP to themselves. Uh, but we've gotten incoming from agriculture, from uh, animal health, from the energy sector, uh, material sciences, any molecular based industry. So, so I would say, uh, you know, on the surface, we look like we have a biopharmaceutical industry focus, which is which we do. That's what we know. Um, but very easily, we can transition to other ver industry verticals. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, Kevin, just just keeping on what what you and Charlie were just talking about, and knowing that all of our viewers are not scientists, um, can you talk a little bit about? what molecular landscaping actually is? Is there a way to put that in layperson's terms? Well, maybe even taking a, a level up. So mole the molecular landscaping tool, which is the product that we just, just launched, it, it basically uh, allows one to understand 
at the level of the individual uh, molecule, uh, what's going on um, from an IP perspective in a particular area of interest. Um, but from a layperson's perspective, if you wanted to understand uh, what Essencio does, whether it's molecular landscaping or claims-based landscaping and patents or what have you, we have a way of taking patents in, in various areas and, and deconstructing them, really reducing them to their, their lowest common denominator or their most basic uh, sort of uh, output. And we do that using math and algorithms. And what that allows us to do is then to compare uh, patents one to another. And once we do that, we can find certain relationships that can be monetizable for companies uh, through the use of their patents and other third party patents. Okay, that's interesting. Um, what, what's your plan for, uh, for growing the company? Are you going to grow it organically? Are you going to bring in investors? Are you going to partner with, you know, a larger company that might be in the same industry? You know, what's your thinking at this point in terms of growing the company? Yeah, yeah good, good question. So, so whatever comes first, no, I will probably grow the company uh, through our, our channel partner. So we, we see because of the products that we sell and um, what we, we can do in the organizations that we sell to, um, that uh, Essentia has a very unique opportunity to be able to grow the company through direct channel partners and even some indirect channel partners, some that you wouldn't necessarily expect. We expect our uh, revenues and sales to mostly by 2023 to be coming through channel partners, whether they're selling our products or whether our products are actually integrated into their products. Um, we are looking for investment right now. We, we have a round that, that's open. We're doing a, a raise right now. Um, but at, at the end of the day, we see uh, Essentio's growth uh, coming through channel partners. And we even see potentially an exit would, would be with uh, a strategic or a, a, even a competitor at some point in the future. Okay, so, so staying on that point for a second, are there, are there competitive products currently in your industry or is your product unique and unchallenged at the moment? So the product right now, IP Geoscape, uh, which is actually what you see on the canvas behind me, is unique and unchallenged, right? There's nothing like it on the market. There's nothing that's a molecular le landscaping tool with an IP focus that's data agnostic that can consume uh, data from any source where it's available. So that's unique. What I would tell you though, is what we do from an IP strategy perspective, uh, it can be argued that maybe your, your law firm can do that, right? You know, helping you use IP to its fullest potential. So I would say that Essencio has uh, competitors um, in, in the sense of, of using IP to its fullest potential and IP strategy, but our products themselves right now, nothing like it exists. Okay. Um, so uh, then staying on that again a little, a little bit further, what, what, what is it about your technology? What distinguishes your technology, its applications and effectiveness from other uh, things that are out there in your in your space. Yeah, it's it's the ability to uh, have an, an an intellectual property understanding, um, and it this is with whatever question is being asked, whatever strategic question the organization is asking. At Essencio, uh, we believe there's an intellectual property answer for every question, and so we've created a suite of products that layer from an from an IP perspective, layer on top of any other data set so we can bring in any data into that uh, molecular landscape or, or what have you, whatever product that we're, we're offering to the customer and the customer can consume any data through an intellectual property lens. So that's the thing that really makes uh, Essencio and its products unique. Uh, for us, intellectual property isn't necessarily uh, the, the object of the analysis is the subject, it's the lens through which we view and answer all questions. Okay. Um, what are the biggest barriers to entry into your industry or industries of focus? Uh, biggest, biggest barriers right now, at least uh, from, for, for us from a, a, a set, do you mean from a selling perspective or from a technology perspective and competitors and things like that? What, yeah, what's I mean, the, it could, could be both 
or, or be both? Yeah. So uh, selling really to customers is is there, we have two hurdles, right? So it's two hurdles. It's it's getting them to understand um, and agree to the fact that they're not using intellectual property to its fullest potential. Most organizations think they are um, until you explain to them that they're not. Um, and then the second piece is really getting them to also agree to use a product that's fairly new um, and unique in, in, in answering and helping them uh, with that uh, issue of using intellectual property to its fullest potential. So it's a double hurdle for us um, from a barrier perspective. Okay. Yeah. What would um, success look like for Asensio? Of course, success for Asensio uh, would eventually be, uh, you know, the, the product, the IP Geoscape product doing very well, um, a potential exit, whether that's some, some sort of IPO or merger or, or sale. Um, but there's another side to that equation for us. And, and it's more of a public interest from a public interest perspective. And it's really built around the fact that um, we see uh, so much waste. I spoke to you about waste from an intellectual property perspective. And that waste uh, really, uh, in, in many cases, in our opinion, uh, goes to uh, some of the overall cost of, of drugs and, and products that are currently on the market. We can help organizations. If an organization can eventually say, using Asensio's tools, we were able to recoup uh, X number of, of R&D dollars that were spent uh, because we were able to uh, find value generating and monetizable opportunities for intellectual property of ours that was going into the trash can. Um, I think that may translate uh, to society as large. So uh, that would also be success for Asensio. Okay, thank you. Kevin, how important are the life science resources of the Philadelphia region uh, to the growth and success of Atencio? Uh They're very important. Um, it's it's funny uh, as a as an employee at a at a pharmaceutical company, and even living in this city for many years, you don't realize what's available to you until you become an entrepreneur. Um, and now, as the veil was lifted uh, in 2017, when I went and started the company. Um, I began to see all the resources that are available in the life science, and that's on the investment side, uh, the startup community here. Uh, just, just there, there are so many different organizations uh, that are helpful in this city um, from a life sciences perspective that I was completely unaware of, um, but I'm very happy that uh, I know of now. Do any of those organizations stick out in your mind that you'd like to highlight? Oh, sure. Uh, one, for example, is Ben Franklin uh, Technologies. Uh, so uh, we, we are a prima partner of Ben Franklin. They're very active They're on the investment side, but also on the educational side. Uh, I, I think that is one organization that I would, I would call out immediately, um, at least from a life sciences perspective. And you have Life Sciences PA. Uh, There's there so many uh, groups and organizations uh, that, I could, that I could call out. Um, they're, they're all over the place. Our viewers may or may not know that Ben Franklin Technology Partners was actually started with tobacco settlement money some 20 years ago. So it's got uh, it, it's got the public's best interest at heart. And it was actually brought to life with hopes that uh, investments in young upstart companies would help solve some of the health crises uh, down the road. And it's been able to do just that. So congratulations for being a part of that ecosystem. Yeah. Um, yeah. How does Philadelphia, how does our region, Kevin, compare to other life science hubs in the countries like San Francisco, San Diego, Research Triangle Park, and maybe Cambridge? Yeah, yeah so Philadelphia uh, has a, uh, a reputation of being blue collar and, you know, we're fighters and everything like that. But I will tell you um, from my perspective and what I've seen from, from, from a growth perspective, uh, in the life sciences and startup community here in Philly, uh, we're doing an excellent job. Uh, things are taking off here. There are so many companies, the investment, uh, especially on the biotech side, uh, the genomic side, uh, there's, there's, there's so much happening here in the city. Buildings are being built, uh, labs are being created. Uh, there's just a lot happening here in, in and around uh, the area. I can think of well, one example, for example, the uh, PA Biotechnology Center and Horsham, uh, you know, we're, we're friends with them as well. There's, there's so much activity from a life science perspective here in Philadelphia. Um, 
I'm just curious if you have been uh, if you have been approached or if you would be receptive if a foreign country came to you and asked for this technology, is that something, is that a conversation which you've had or which you would be open to, or is this pretty much being used to, to keep not only this region, but this country insulated from others? Because as you say, they can probably, if they know where to look, they can probably figure out um, some of the pieces and parts, just nobody's packaged it like you guys have before, right? Sure, sure. Well, we, we have, uh clients that are outside of the US, right? So um, there's there's the piece of, the, of our company that's really built around value generation and bringing organizations together. So, you know, we, we, we're very happy to take a, a US company that may not necessarily know that their IP has some strategic value to a company, uh, a biopharmaceutical company in France or in Australia, and we can bring the two of them together and there's a new product opportunity there that neither one knew existed because of the relationship between uh, their intellectual property, uh, respectively. Uh, so we, we we will do that, um, and we do have clients that exist uh, outside the U.S. It's great, thank you. I know many of the the CEOs of startup companies who've been guests on the show. They acquired their company's IP from local universities and pharma companies or med device companies. It, it, it was that necessary for Essencio? Yeah, yeah. So we we developed uh, at least in its infancy uh, one of our products inside of Purdue, um, and because of that, we had to um, you know figure out a way to get the IP associated with that. And I was ha I'm happy to say we were able to do that and worked out uh, something to do. And and um, but beyond that, no, everything that we've done since leaving has really been internal and, and internally generated. Okay, um, we have about two minutes, so maybe one minute for this question. Sure, sure. Kevin, um, what advice do you have for uh, folks who've been displaced by either technology or life sciences companies in the Philadelphia region who are trying to decide whether to develop a company around the technology with which they are familiar? I, I would say in, in, in the shortest uh, and, and the highest level as possible is just just start, just jump. You, you have to, there's no perfect time. Uh, I was, uh, you know, speaking honestly, scared out of my mind uh, mm -hmm. when I left Purdue and, and uh, the paycheck and the health insurance and everything else that went with it. Um, and so were some of the people around me, i.e. my family. Uh, but you, you sort of have to take that jump and, and believe in what you're doing. Uh, you were given that idea for a reason. I, I, I believe that uh, truly, and you have to move with it. Um, and, and that's what I would say. Okay, well, listen, that was a terrific show. I think we could go another 30 minutes, but um, I'd like to thank our special guests this evening, Kevin Brown, the CEO of Ascensio. Uh, Charlie, uh, thank you very much for co-hosting. Uh, the next guest on uh, Money Matters TV is David Jansen the founder of Catalyst Key, uh, and uh, that's a medical device company. Uh, so uh, for all of our viewers, thank you for watching this evening, and we will see you again next time.